Hello and welcome back to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, where today we are going to the Pale Cave. So let's get on in there. So, this music sounds a bit more airy than the bass version, I would say. And yet the cave itself looks a lot more frozen, but it's also dripping a whole lot. Maybe it's supposed to be melting? Because, like, before there was snow on top, now there isn't. So, yeah, maybe it's melting. And as for what we're going to want here, I believe we want some ice res. That's what I'm going to say. Ice res. And poison res. Why not? So we're not going to do a full clear of this place because... Oh, wait. It's not ice res. It's thunder res we want. That's right. That we're not going to do a full clear of this place because... There's not really any need to in the post-game dungeons. Like, full clears... Unless you're in a seven-star dungeon... Mean next to nothing. Okay, can you stop with your spells? Okay, maybe a little bit of ice res would have still been good. Okay, can we stop beating up on me? Please? Cannot wait until I have the force ring and then thus immune to standard flinches. Okay, enough with the punching, please. Oh, uh, now there's another... Well, okay, bye. Yeah, basically we're going to be going after the chests that can either give artifacts or give loot. That's what we're doing here. Because, yeah, points mean nothing in post-game dungeons that are not seven moon ones. All that matters is chests. And occasionally, uh, occasionally specific enemies. So we're going to give this a smack and that a smack and then that a, and then that. Except we need to smack them both closer together. Do we even need to hit this one? I don't think so. For some reason, Clavats have a harder time hitting these at the same time than anyone else. Like, other races can just do it with their standard attacks, but apparently Clavats have a little bit of trouble. Okay, can you stop casting Thundagas? Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's kind of difficult to avoid, so it's basically guaranteed damage. Wait. There's nothing up here, is there? Yeah. Nothing. And there's nothing up there, so we just come straight over here. Ow. There we go. At least I know my focus attack can do it. Come on. Get out of here. There we go. No more club goblin is good. Because he is the one who is best at flinching me. Don't know why I'm even fighting this jellyfish. We could have just run on by. 
Yeah, it only had an apple. I can't even pick those up right now. Alrighty. So up here we've got a Gigas. Okay. And now we don't. And we're gonna come this way first. Oh, I'm hanging in there. Actually, wait. Oh, cool. Can't pick that up. So, yeah, we're going to come over here because this will take us to most of the artifacts, I believe. Boy, grapes. Yes, hello, Mr. Gigas. All right, time to take this elevator on down. Anytime now. There we go. Well, that could have gone better. Oh boy, a flower seed. Yeah, that could have been something a lot more valuable than a flower seed. But it wasn't. Could have been one of this dungeon's exclusive materials. Okay, we're taking too many Thundaras. I'm surprised there wasn't a jellyfish casting all those Thundaras. Usually the mages will do more Agas. Any time game. All right, club gobbo down, faster gobbo down, and now there's only you, Mr. Gigas. And what artifact do we have in here? Oh boy, an onion sword. That can only be found in Cycle 3 or post-game dungeons. And it gives a whopping one strength. Just one. Unfortunately, it doesn't get better as the game goes on, unlike Onion Knights. It's definitely a reference to Onion Knights, but... Yeah, unlike them, it doesn't magically become miles better once you get to a high enough level. In this game, the Onion Sword is just always bad. I mean, it's better than having nothing, of course, but it's not amazing. The sparkling Bracers are likewise not amazing. But they're more amazing than the Onion Sword is. Available earlier, too. And now we don't have to take any more elevators. Which is good, because they take a while in solo when your Moogle is not cooperating. Okay, can't let you free cast. You're doing too many Aga, er, Aras.
Okay, just jellyfish left. Yeah, if enemies were dropping more than, like, 20 gil food and magicite, it would actually be a lot more worthwhile to do full clears of dungeons. But, no. Post-game dungeons, you just... You don't full clear them. It's not worth it. So we've got like two or three more chests to hit up and then we'll go for the boss. There may or may not be other chests, I don't recall. But if there are, then it's probably less efficient to go for them. I mean, if I were going for max efficiency, I wouldn't even be fighting these. Because, like, I don't have to kill them. I'm just doing it because they're here. Sure is nice not needing to deal with any Sahagan coming out of there. Okay, can you stop chain flinching me? Oh wow, that super wasn't worth it. But at least the Gygus can't reach in here? Sorry big boy, you're too big. It's okay, man. I know the feeling of being too big for things. I'm six foot four and I lived in Japan for two years. I definitely got my share of too big moments. was the time where I was apartment hunting and I found an apartment where the doors came up to the bridge of my nose. I don't want to choose to live somewhere where I can hit my nose on the doors. On the, uh, on the top of the door frame specifically. That's, no. I am never going to live my life like that if I can avoid it. And then there's the fact that on some, uh, some trains had to duck a little bit to avoid bumping my head. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, that didn't quite work. Neither did that. This is so much more lenient in multi. Like in multi, as long as... As long as both of them have the visual effect on screen at the same time, it just works. Some of the castles and temples in Japan have some really steep staircases where if you're too tall going down them is troublesome because you might need to duck under the uh, floor that you're coming down from because most of the staircases tend to you know go towards the middle of the uh, structure and yeah so they've got floor all around them and Easy to bonk your head is what I'm trying to say. Also, the corridors in some castles, it's easy to bonk your head if you're tall enough. 
And it is boss time in here. Let's go ahead and cast a meteor on it. Just because. I want to see how much it does. Haven't actually used my meteor ring on any, like, real enemies by this point. I've had it for a couple days now. It's been a few days since the last recording. But I haven't really used it. This worm breathes dragon element. Well, that was underwhelming. I have no idea what that's supposed to do to me. Like it clearly does damage, but it looks like it should do some sort of status too, doesn't it? Also, I'm pretty sure my melee attacks do more damage than that meteor did. This thing's being very nice about not doing any melee attacks. I say right before it does a melee attack. He's got his jelly friends back, but I don't need to care. We know what mer drops look like. At your service, Capo. Oh boy. Here you go, Capo. Thanks, Capo. Somehow I got one of my brothers to hate me. Oh no. I'll be home soon. I don't believe there's any real reason for me to be home soon, but here, have some meat. That'll help him recover. I've got your reply, Capo. So long, Capo. Bye, Capo. Alright, so Palladium. What was that again? Is that the Curse Res? I think it's the Curse Res. In which case, I've got the shield. So let's get the armor? Well, as much as our mother wanted us to go home to check on father, I think he's probably fine. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and not do that on camera. Besides, even if he's not fine, it's probably not that interesting. So join us next time when we go to another post-game dungeon. See you then, friends.